the next couple of questions I'm going to bring up are going to involve things that are kind of personal. So if you don't want to watch these videos, uh, you don't have to. I'm going to talk about the feminization effects that come into play. And that's really the first question. What are the good and the bad things about going on uh, hormone replacement therapy? Well, the good thing is, you know, you start feminizing. By feminization, I mean you start taking on characteristics of a cis woman. You start developing some of the same things that they have that you didn't have originally because you had testosterone in your body. Now, let's get this out of the way. I will never, ever, ever feminize as well as, say, I might have if I had had my puberty arrested when I was about eight years old and remained asexual hormone wise until I was either 16 or 18 years old and then went on an estrogen therapy session in which case I would have feminized really well and that's what's happening with a lot of trans children today you know they suppress their puberty at about eight or nine and then go through until they're about 16 to 18 and then go on hormone replacement and when they do that they feminize or masculinize if you're female to male pretty well um, I would imagine in the next generation or so you're going to have a whole group of trans children out there that are now trans adults that you're not going to know whether or not they were cis or not they were cis and what I mean by when I say a cis female, I mean someone who was born with a female reproductive system and their body is producing estrogen. You know, you have all or part of a uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, vagina, all of that, and your body is producing all or some estrogen. You have that. I don't have that. So I'm not a cis woman, I'm a trans woman. So what are the, the nice things about going on hormone replacement well for one thing my skin it becomes smoother it becomes softer uh, one of the things that people have already told me the last uh, time I got together with friends is one of them said I saw you a month ago and I can see changes in your face and one of the changes that I've noticed is that in the last three months I had some pretty enormous bags under my eyes and if I go back and look at some old photos, I'll see those. I don't have those bags anymore. They're actually starting to recede. I first noticed it on my torso. It was, the skin was getting softer and smoother. And I notice it now on my arms. Uh, when I had uh, makeovers done, uh, the woman who was doing my makeover even said, where you shave, because she knew I was trans, I told her. She says, your skin is still very soft. So that's one of the things that comes into play. My skin is softening. It's tightening up. I'm losing some of the wrinkles. That's one of the things that helps me look a bit younger. Uh, my body odor changes. And so does my sense of smell and my sense of taste. There are certain foods now that I never really used to care about that now I'm tasting them different. And of course, one of those is chocolate, uh, <laughs> the bane of women everywhere. Um, I also notice I cannot use a men's deodorant any longer. There's no difference technically in the, the, the properties of keeping you nice and dry and smelling good between men and women's deodorant. But the fragrance of a man's deodorant just drives me nuts now. I smell it and I'm like, Ugh, I can't stand that. I want something that smells nice. And I want to put that on my body. So that's one of the things that happen. Your odor changes, your sense of smell, your sense of taste. I don't have as much body hair as I used to. I, I do still shave my arms a little but not as much as I used to. When I first started out, before I went on hormones, I was actually shaving my arms and my legs uh, about once a week. Same thing with my underarms. Now, I do it maybe once a month. And I haven't actually shaved under my underarms now in about two and a half months because I don't have to because there's no hair there. It's not growing. Uh, same thing with my chest and my stomach, all my body hair. It's lessening. Not my beard, however. Uh, this area and this area, that'll have to be removed 
by electrolysis or laser. Um, hormones don't do anything about that. Another thing that hormones don't help with is your natural hair. If you are already suffering from male pattern baldness, you are continuing to suffer from male pattern baldness. That's not going to come back. Um, I haven't thought about trying female Rogaine, but to be quite honest, if I pulled this wig off and showed you what my hair looked like, you'd see why I'm wearing a wig. It's not worth it. I have a, a huge bald spot in the back of my head where I started going bald at about 30. Uh, genetics, what can you do? What else? Smoother, softer skin, less body hair, the sense of smell change. Now we're going to talk about a few things that are delicate. So if you want to stop the video at this point, move on. You're more than welcome to do so. Okay. One, um, I'm sterile. Estrogen sterilizes you. If you were born a cis male, you no longer are capable of producing children. Not that I want to, I have two children already. But um, no, no more, no more kids. Uh, for the sake of putting this out there, I had a vasectomy about 10 years ago, which doesn't sterilize you, but it keeps you from impregnating someone. Well, now I don't have to worry about that at all. It's, it's all dead. Uh, that, that actually, from what I understand, can't be brought back either. If I stop taking estrogen shots, I'm not suddenly going to um, be able to produce children again. Not that I'd want to. But I could produce testosterone again. The other thing that happens is everything down there begins shrinking. Uh, my prostate was, is shrinking, but it was already small to begin with. My HRT doctor, she examined my prostate the good old-fashioned way, and she remarked that I have the smallest prostate of anyone she's ever had into her office, which I take that as a, a compliment because usually by the time you're my age, your prostate begins expanding. But my testes and my penis are smaller than they were before. They were never very big to begin with, so everything is shrinking. Um, normally, you will shrink upwards of 30 to 50 percent of original size. And I was, like I said, I was never very big to begin with, so it's there. Uh, keeps me from really having to tuck and tuck is pushing everything into your body or using something to smooth it out so if you're wearing women's jeans you look as if you don't have anything down there I don't really have that much of a problem I can't really wear skin tight jeans it would be kind of ridiculous I uh, am more of a soccer mom than I am anything else which I don't have a problem with because soccer moms are cool and last but not least, let me sit up and show you, right here, the girls, as my doctor likes to call them, you do begin developing breasts. These are, I have a padded bra on, but what's underneath them are real. I can almost fill out an A cup now, and that's after three months or so which is pretty good growth. I was actually developing breast buds about three months into this. I mean, three weeks, not three months. Actually, about three weeks into taking hormones. I was developing breast buds, and people told me, wow, that's fast. And I mean, you could tell they were there because you could feel them. And I was checking, and I was like, mm, there's something there. So, real breast. Uh, they are growing. I probably won't ever get big, which is good because I have a 46 inch chest. So if I was like a C cup, I'd be pretty big. Uh, as it is, even my A cups are fairly big. If you look at a, a woman with a, say like a 32 A cup, they don't have much in the way of breasts. I actually have breasts, but the rest of my body, it, it evens out. So those are the good things. What are the bad things? Well. For one, I have thinner skin. Women's skin in the epidermis is thinner than a man's. And not only is my skin thinning out, but I'm also losing muscle tone. Uh, muscle is disintegrating. That's another thing that happens. 
estrogen does not allow for the production of a lot of huge muscle. You can do it with a lot of working out, and some people say with you know, a bit of human growth hormone, but you're, you're not going to develop the same sort of muscle structure that a male has. And even male bodybuilders who go through trans, uh, transitioning, they notice they lose a lot of muscle structure. There are things you can do to maintain that, but you will lose it. Now, lack of muscle plus thinner skin equals greater heat loss. And I've already noticed that, um, especially my hands. My hands will now get cold. And I began to notice uh, when I first started that I am developing a, uh, I don't have the, quite the same resistance to cold that I once had. So now it's like, ooh, <laughs> I need to wear a sweater. Uh, you, you don't get away from that. Uh, what else? Estrogen leads can lead to depression, which is really not good for me because I was already suffering from depression before I went through transition. Another thing that I noticed right away is that you're tired a lot. It's because you don't have that testosterone pushing you forward. You have all the, the girly estrogen in you and you rapidly begin to realize that this is a common state for women. You don't feel that testosterone perk at times. And about a week after I started doing hormones, I was like, oh man, I'm tired all the time. Why am I tired? Well, estrogen, thank you. Uh, the mood swings. <laughs> if you're a woman, you know what I'm talking about. I go through these all the time. Um, this has been a particularly bad week. I've been suffering from some severe depression and um, I go into crying jags. Uh, I haven't cried yet today, so I consider that uh, lucky. I really consider myself lucky. Usually I'll cry at least once a day and then I'll feel happy. I feel happy right now. I feel great right now, but the swings will come and you can't help it. To me, it's like you have no filter on your emotions now. And I was emotional before I started transition, so I'm pretty much in the same spot, uh, like it or not. But, uh, you, you, one of the toughest things I'm having to learn is how to handle the, the outpouring of emotions. You know, like There's no filter. So if you feel like crying, you cry. You don't really hold it back very well. And if you feel like laughing, you laugh. And if you feel like being a bitch, you have to fight to keep that bitch inside. It really is kind of bad. Uh, what else? I think the biggest thing that comes out of this, other than depression and being tired, and heat loss and all these other things is the girls can now kill me. I am susceptible to breast cancer. I mean, I could get it. Nobody in my family is genetically predispositioned for breast cancer. That doesn't mean I can't get it now. I won't probably ever get prostate cancer because of the shrinkage and the things that are happening. But now that I'm developing breast, I can get breast cancer and I'm starting to actually self-examine myself. And some people say you're feeling yourself up, but it's not really true. I actually am learning about my breast and I'm learning the shape. So, you know, touching them is not that unusual because they're developing and I've never had them before. So I need to know what they feel like. So if something pops in there that I don't understand, I can talk to someone. And October, by the way, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so please feel your boobies, all you women, cis and trans together, to make certain that you're okay. And this also means that probably in a few years I'm going to have to start having mammograms as well. But yes, you know, congratulations, you're now a woman, you can die from your breast. <laughs> Just what you want to hear.